to you. Thank you so much for tuning in to our broadcast this Sunday morning. I am grateful that you're here with us. We are back in our studio. We had live service on last Sunday, first Sunday in June at the Smith of Middle School. Praise God for those of you who came out. I enjoyed myself tremendously. and Hopefully you have enjoyed yourself, those that were there. And those that were not there, we were able to uh, rewind and play the broadcast. We had technical difficulties uh, in getting our live programming out. And so uh, that's why we're taking spot chances. Uh, when we say chances, we will be again June 27th in uh, Smitha or at Smitha uh, for the next few Sundays. I'll be back in the studio here and on Wednesday, always in the studio. And so uh, we're grateful for those of you that's planning for the next physical service. That is June 27th. But I am so delighted to be back with you uh, live for those in our audience who have been listening. I will be teaching uh, today on success the right way. And that's what we're going to be dealing with. What is success and success the right way? We're talking about prospering and being in health. So I'm back to this series and hopefully you've been following. If you have not, please uh, look at our app and uh, YouTube and you can catch up yourself. I teach usually in series. I keep a train of thought so you can understand what the Lord is saying to you. I'm not finishing one sermon or one message. Uh, 
So we're going to pray and we're going to get into the word of God. I want to call your attention to uh, 3 John verse uh, 2, uh, 3 John chapter 1 verse 2 is only one chapter. And so let's pray. Father, we give you thanks and praise. Again, a day you made, we rejoice. We're glad in it. We thank you for your anointing. I decrease as you increase in me, enabling me to preach and teach with boldness, clarity, and accuracy. I invite you through the Holy Spirit to think through my mind and speak through my lips and all our getting. Let us get understanding. Thank you that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart is acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, you are my strength. Glory to God. And God is my Redeemer. All right, let's go over to the book of 3 John, verse number 2 uh, through verse 4. And here in this passage of Scripture, if you're just coming into this lesson, John writes to Gaius, one of his servants, and he talks about his success, his prosperity, and what God's expectation is for those who love him. And so John was praying and conveying to Gaius, because you're walking in the truth, living in the truth, and dwelling in the truth, and treating other people right, then you ought to have success yourself. Today we're talking about success the right way, or true prosperity, what it is, what prosperity means. Some of us equate prosperity only to uh, materialism, material things, or finances. And we got to first understand that our success is in God, our prosperity is in God, uh, in our soul. We ought to love God with all the heart, our strength, our soul, our mind, our understanding, and then love our neighbors. You know, the love of the world, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, and the lust of the eyes. Uh, he that loveth the world don't love God. And so we got to look at that. If we gain this whole world and lose our soul, what have we profited? So that's what this lesson and the premises of this lesson to show you what true prosperity is. So if I don't have money, if I don't have material things, is the Lord still my shepherd and I shall not want? Is Jehovah Raha still uh, my shepherd? If I don't have material things, is he still Jehovah Jireh, God who provides? Are you following? Philippians said, but my God shall supply all my need according to his what? Riches and glory through Christ Jesus. So I have to get a conviction and confidence and belief in my soul and, and stabilization on the inside of me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Let's go over to 3 John, uh, verse number 2, as John prayed for gay eyes. He said, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things. I pray that you may prosper in all things. Other words, I wish, I desire, I request, I make this uh, mention to God on your behalf that you prosper in how many things? In all things and be in health. Get this, just as your soul prospers. So there ought to be a balance here. If your soul is prospering, glory to God. If your soul loves Jesus, if your soul is sold out to God, if your soul is trusting God, just as your soul prospers or have success, you should have success. He said, I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you. Where is the truth? The truth is on the inside. Jesus says in John 8, uh, 30 through 32, you'll know the truth and the truth shall make you free. He says in John 17, uh, sanctify them through thy word and thy word is true. So other words, it's the word in us. Amen. It's, it's our confidence in God's word. The worlds were framed by the word of God, Hebrews 11 and 3. So it's the word in us. Jesus was the word in the beginning. All things were made by it and without it was not anything made that was made. And he came unto his own and his own would not receive him, but as many as receive him. How do we receive him? Through the word of God. To them he gave power to become the sons of God. Paul writes in Romans, and you hear me referring to these scriptures all the time, but I'm trying to show you that your success, as I describe it and define it, is in the word of God. Paul writes in Romans 1.16, he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God under salvation or deliverance to everyone that believes. So you notice how John now is writing, saying that the truth is in you. And just as you walk in the truth, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. So he's telling Gaius, he's saying to us, the scriptures outline what true success is. And we're going to see that through studying the word today, looking at the word today as we meditate on the word and we do what God said. So let's look at this for a minute, quick review, that he wants us to prosper physically, spiritually, uh, financially, every way. 
every way. Prosper in all things. How many things? Have success in all things, even as your soul prosper. So we look at prosperity. Uh, we look at uh, being successful. That's what that word means. God granting us a prosperous and expeditious journey. That's what he says to Gaius. Whatever you do shall prosper. Whatever you put your hands to shall prosper. Are you following me? That's in Psalms 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel, if you're catching up, of the ungodly. So when we're not walking in the advice or counsel of the world or trying to do it the world's way, then we meditate on his word. We delight ourselves in the word, Psalms 1, that whatever we do shall prosper. To, so to be successful, to, to be led, listen to me, by a direct and easy way. That's what prosperity. So God leads me. Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. That means in plenty. He leads me beside still waters. That means quiet success or peace. Another word for prosperity is peace. He restores my soul. And yea, though I walk in the, uh, uh, he restores my soul and I walk in the path of righteousness. Other words, for his namesake, and then he prepares tables in the presence of my enemy. Of course, you can read Psalms 23 and see. So God prepares tables for me. He makes provisions for me. And even if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because the Lord is with me. So that's what prosperity is, to be led. Somebody say to be led in a direct and easy way. Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. My yoke is easy. Glory to God. And my burdens are uh, light. Uh, to success is to grant a successful issue to cause one to prosper or to be successful. Are you following me? And so I want you to look at um, Mark 11, 29 and 30 and Psalms 1, as I quoted, or 23 and Psalms 1. Look at that. To be in health. What does it mean to be in health? To be of sound mind, to be well, to be in good health, to be of what? Sound mind. Remember, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and what? A sound mind. You ought to say to yourself, I'm not crazy and I'm not going crazy and I'm not going to allow the things I'm going through to make me crazy. So to be sound mind, to be well. Of a Christian is talking about those whose opinions are free from the mixture of error. Paul puts it this way, be not conformed or in harmony or functioning agreement with the world, but be transformed, how? By the renewing of your mind and prove your mind means your understanding. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind, by the word of God, then prove what is good, acceptable, and the perfect will of God. One who stays in the grace, that's what health is. One who stays in the grace and is strong. So I am what I am, glory to God, by the grace of God. So let's look at a couple things. I, I want to share a couple of scriptures that I may not have shared. I'll quote this one in Psalms 107 verse 20. And I know I quote it all the time. It said he sent his word and healed us. So we told you when the word is in you, when the peace of God is in you, Jesus said, my peace, he, my spoken word, I give you. When I speak a word to you, you hold on to that. And that's what causes you to succeed in the midst of trouble and you can be of good cheer because Jesus said in this world, you'll have tribulation, but I've overcome the world. So Psalms 107 verse 20, he sent his word and healed us. Let's go to a new one. I, I have not necessarily read and may have quoted, and I don't know if I quoted it, but it came to me today as I prepared this lesson, Jeremiah 17 Look at verse 14, Jeremiah 17, verse 14. What am I telling you? To prosper and be what? In health, even as your soul prospers. So that's what he wished. That's what he's desired. We're talking about true success, true prosperity, what it is. So my success is the peace of my soul. Glory to God. My success is my confidence in God's word. My success is trusting God to lead me in a direct and easy way. My success doesn't matter what I go through. Remember, Joseph was sold into slavery, then from the Ishmaelites sold to uh, Potiphar's house, the Egyptian. And, and the Bible says why he was in Potiphar's house, because the Lord was with him, that everything he did prospered. He was successful in his journey. He was successful. Even in the prison, when his, uh, Potiphar's wife lied on Joseph, people may lie on you, but even if you're in jail, even if you're in bondage, even if you're in confinement, it said he still was put in charge. He was successful and God will cause you to succeed. 
So let's look at where I say Jeremiah 17, verse 14. So we're talking about prosper, be in health, even as your soul. So I'm looking at health right now. I'm defining you. Health is a sound mind. Health is peace in God. Health is knowing who you are in Christ. Look how Jeremiah writes it. He says in verse 14, heal me. O oh Lord, and I shall be healed. Glory to God. So when God heals me, when God gives me peace, when God gives me sound mind, when God gives me grace, what does Paul say? He says, uh, when he was going through his trial, I prayed three times and, and God respond, my grace, glory to God is sufficient. So when God heals you, when God gives you peace of mind is grace It's by grace. The Bible teaches us in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, we are saved, delivered, and set free by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man shall boast. So my peace of God, my serenity, my success, you getting this, is through God's grace. So Jeremiah writes, heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for you are my praise. Glory to God. God is our praise. That's what we ought to be giving him the glory. We ought to be given him the praise, not gloating in our stuff, not gloating in our name, not gloating in what we achieve. God is our praise. So whatever I have, whatever I become, whatever I achieve in life is only by God's grace. So God should get the praise. Paul writes in Corinthians, if we're going to glory, we ought to glory in the Lord. I said, we ought to glory in the Lord. So that's why you see people with material things, monetarily, uh, financial, whatever, and still families are disrupted. They are 10,000 square foot home, but there's no peace in the home. Divorce, all of these things, children uh, are going crazy because there is not true success unless it's in God. And so, so many people are searching for answers. We're searching for direction. So many people are trying to find where that foundation is, where my source is. They have stuff. They have relationships where relationships don't work out. They have children and children won't follow them. You know, that's why Colossians 3 said, let the peace of God rule your heart. That's what it says in pro be rich in the word of God. That's what we ought to be rich. Paul says in Timothy, that we ought to teach a man that's rich in this world not to trust in the uncertainty of riches. So too many of us are striving for the dollar sign behind our name or the home or the square footage or the car we drive, and yet we are unhappy in our soul. What did, what did John say to Gaius in 3 John? The truth, glory to God. That's what we're going to look at is on the inside of me. So Jeremiah said, if you heal me, I'm healed. You give me sound mind, I have sound mind. If you save me or deliver me and set me free, I shall be saved. And you are my praise. So we don't praise stuff. We don't praise material things. We don't praise position. We don't praise uh, people. We give the praise to God. All things, we'll see that if I get there in Chronicles. Chronicles 29, come of thee, O Lord, and of thy own glory to God have we given thee. That's why so many people are robbing God or don't believe in giving or giving to the church. They're afraid the preacher is going to receive some benefit from it or the church is too uh, beautified. And it says in Haggai 1 that you're bringing money home and putting it in bags with holes and the Lord is blowing on it. Because your success is not in what you just store up. Your success is in your confidence in God, your trust in his word. He gives you those things. He gives us power to get wealth to establish his covenant. That's in Deuteronomy chapter 8. You'll find it in verse 19, 18, and 19. God gives you the ability. Anybody remember this passage of scripture uh, to one he gave five talents, to one he gave two, and, and then one he gave one according to their ability. Talents was money. One man produced and, and did and was successful and prospering, he gained five more. Another with two, he gained two more. The one with one because of his soul, because of his thought process, because of the wisdom, because of the ability in him, he's buried his. How many of us are burying the Lord's money, burying your finances, burying your ability, burying your talent, burying the wisdom of God? So in other words, you're praying for money, but you don't know how to handle money because your soul, glory to God, you understand it, your appetite, passions, emotions, desires, and feelings are headed in the wrong direction. He restores. Psalm 23, he's my shepherd. He make me lie down in plenty. He leaves me beside still waters. And verse three, he restores glory to God. 
my soul. Praise him. Somebody give him praise. And so we got to understand the forces of our soul, our appetite, our passions, our emotions, the animated part of us, the part that God is in us. He breathed into us and we became a living soul. Even second Corinthians, I'm catching you up. Verse uh, chapter four, verse seven, it says what? But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Verse seven tells you the excellency of the power. So everything we achieve, everything we do, everything we have comes from the Lord. Praise him, somebody. So I'm going to some new areas that I want you to understand and see uh, here. Uh, you can prosper the right way or you can prosper the wrong way. You remember Psalms 1, blessed is the man that walked not in the counsel of the ungodly. Let's revisit real quick before I go any further to Genesis 39. I'm catching you up. How many are caught up now? Uh, Genesis 39. Some of you are listening to this for the first time. What are we talking about? Success the right way. Success the right way. Let's look at verse one through five. So I told you Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers, hated by his brothers. So it don't matter how many people hating on you. Don't mean how many people talking about you. Don't mean how many people have their mouth on you. The scripture records no weapon, Isaiah 55, that is formed shall prosper against us. And every tongue that rises up shall be condemned. Understand Joseph. He had a dream at 17. Are you hearing me? He had a dream when at 17, told it to his father, told it to his brothers and they despised him. He was sold into Egypt. And even in all that time he was in Egypt and then in jail, God still caused him to prosper. Uh, he didn't stand before Pharaoh or tell his dream or interpret Pharaoh's dream until he was 30. So it takes time. It's called divine delay. As long as God is with you, as long as God is in you, as long as God is guiding you, making you to lie down in green pastures, it doesn't matter what's coming against you. If you trust the dream, if you trust the vision, if you trust the word, if you have confidence in God, he gave it to me and what God has given to me, no man can take away. If God, glory to God, be for me, who can be against me? Let's review uh, Genesis 39. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. It's telling you what happened. And Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian brought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. So transportation, listen to me, God can deliver you to a place and he can deliver you from a place. Sometimes our journeys or the people we've been in company with uh, has helped us to get there. Sometimes through suffering, th sometimes through conflict, sometimes through trial, sometimes through test. That's why Jesus said in this world, you will have tribulations, but be of good cheer. Glory to God. Praise him. We, we give you the praise. All, be, be of good cheer because what? I've overcome the world. So he was carried. And, and so sometimes the people you hang with, what I'm saying, the journey you take, the path you take will carry you through certain episodes in your life. But God is with you. Praise the Lord. The Lord was with Joseph and he was a successful man. Did you see that? He was sold to the Ishmaelite, then sold into Egypt, and the Lord was with Joseph. I, that's what I'm trying to see before I move on, let you see, and show you that no matter success, prosperity is when the Lord is with you. Are you on the job with the Lord? Are you in the marriage with the Lord? Are you uh, in relationship with the Lord? Whatever you do, you ought to do it, Colossians 3, as unto the Lord in word or deed, not unto men. Whether you're a father, whether you're a wife, whether you're a husband, all of those things, whether you're a child, whether you're an employer or employee, I do it as unto the Lord because he's with me, his rod and his staff. You understand Psalms 23? They comfort me in every situation. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow death, I fear no evil because you, you are what? With me. Praise the Lord. He was a successful man and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that Joseph was with, uh, was with him. His master saw that the Lord was, let me read it right, with him. That's what happened. And that he, and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found favor in the sight and served him. And then he made him overseer of his house and all that he had. And he put under uh, his authority, everything that he had. 
So it was from the time that he had made him overseer of the house and all that he had that the Lord blessed, glory to God, the Egyptian house for Joseph's sake and the blessings of the Lord and the blessings of the Lord, glory to God, uh, was on all that he had in the house and in the field. How many you know God will bless you wherever you go and people that accept you, receive you and embrace you for the right reason will also be blessed. Are uh, you found the blessings of the Lord, Proverbs 10, 22, maketh one rich. And he addeth glory to God, no sorrow. So as you succeed, as you have, as you gain, are you following me? The Lord makes you rich. So it doesn't matter what kind of job you're on. You ought to do the job unto the Lord and he'll cause you to succeed. He'll cause you to be elevated. He'll cause you to be promoted because you're not doing it for men. Remember Jeremiah, the praise belong to God. He heals me, I'm healed. He saves me, I'm saved. And so I'll praise you. And we'll see that later. And, and so it says in verse six, uh, thus he left all that he had, the, the Egyptian, he left all that he had in Joseph's hand and he did not know what he had except the bread which he ate. Now Joseph uh, was a handsome man. And it says here, in a uh, handsome man in form and in appearance. And so the wife of Potiphar, the wife of the Egyptian uh, was enticed or like Joseph or lusted after him and plotted and lied. And Joseph ended up being put in jail because of the lie. Listen to me, every tongue that rises up shall be condemned. But in jail, he wasn't sour. Are you found, you'll find that in verse seven, verse eight, uh, he didn't get sour. He went to jail, but at the same time, he was promoted in jail. Uh, let's look here in, and further down in, in, the, in the verse. Joseph went and worked in the house, and in verse 12 says that she caught him by his garment and, and told him to lie with me, but he left out and he ran out, and she still uh, lied and said that he tried to uh, lie with her. And then later on, as you go down, Joseph uh, was put in jail. Look at verse 20. Then Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison. Where did he put him in prison? All I'm saying to you, this is my ministry, to bring those out of bondage, those in prison, those who, and prison is not always physical. Sometimes it's mental. You're not healed in your mind. You're only thinking of what people say about you. I'm black and we can't succeed. And I, I'm the only black one. Sometimes we are too prideful or braggadocious because I'm the first black person. I'm the only black person in this position. You better believe God did it. Are you following me? Now, Joseph, a Hebrew in uh, uh, Potiphar's house in Egypt, and God elevates him. And he still give God the praise. He doesn't get sour. He doesn't get bitter. You see, the joy of the Lord, glory to God, is your strength. Joseph, master, took him and put him into prison, a place where the king's prisoners were confined, and he was there in prison. But the Lord was with Joseph. Now, what did I tell you about his dream? 17 years old, and now he's going through a span of serving in Potiphar's house. Now he's going through a span of prison. See, there's episodes in our life. Glory to God. For those of you who watch series and all of these episodes, there's different episodes. So you got to base the next episode, the next series on what has already happened. God has given Joseph a dream. God is with Joseph. God is leading him. God is speaking to him. God is on the inside of him. He's holding on to the word from the Lord. He's holding on to what Jeremiah was saying. Heal me and I'll be healed. Save me and I'll be saved because the praise belong to you. So no matter what I'm in, no matter what I'm going through, God will keep me. The Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and he gave him favor. Glory to God. He gave him what? Favor. I tell you, you'll prosper and be in health even as your soul. He gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners. Look at, look at this. You in bondage. You going through a conflict. 
Come on, you on the job, but people are giving you responsibility. God giving you five talent or two talent. Don't be like the one with one talent and be bitter. Don't be bitter, be better. Don't be bitter, be stronger. Don't be bitter, but be blessed. Don't be bitter, but trust God. Glory to God. How many of you going to hold on to what God promised? All the promises are yes and amen. First Kings says 856, none of those promises have failed. If God has given you a word, if God has called you to a thing, he that began, glory to God, a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. That's what Paul writes in Philippians. There is an account laid up for me, he says, and my God, as the people gave to him, will supply all your need according to his riches and glory. Whatever you in, whatever you're going through, whatever you're dealing with, whatever the circumstance, look here, he's in prison, but the Lord is with him. See, that's where prosperity Stop looking at losing or gaining It's whether God can trust you with, with riches. Can he trust you with wealth? Can he trust you in the position? Can he trust you with statue? Can he trust you with a name behind you? Will you get in politics and lose your faith in God, lose your confidence in God? Will you get in the position and get the big head and think that you have, uh, uh, gotten yourself there? This is what this is showing you. You prosper and you're in health as your soul. Glory to God. The Lord was with him and the keeper of the prison committed Joseph's hand to Joseph's hand, all the prisoners who were in the prison, whatever they did there, it was his doing. The keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority because, because look here in the 39th chapter, uh, because what the, the Lord was with him. And whatever he did, glory to God, the Lord made it to prosper. I said, whatever he did, God caused him to succeed. Whatever he did, God led him in an easy way. I'm in prison, but he'll make it easy for you. I'm in a conflict, but he'll make it easy. I'm in a marriage with difficulties. I'm, I'm coming to the understanding of the Lord and I want to be saved. Yet my spouse is not going to love. God will make it easy. I'm raising children and I've come into the knowledge of God. However, my children are still wayward or still pulling away or they become prodigal and wasteful and destructive. The Lord will make it easy. You understand now, if you gain this whole world, lose your soul, whatever you profit, uh, you got to be stable in God. You got to hold on to the vision. You got to hold on to the dream. You got to hold on to the word of God. Now it doesn't make sense to you where there is no vision, the people perish. Glory to God. You got to hold on to what God promised, what he's shown you. Write the vision and make it plain so people can see it and run with it. You read on with Joseph, his brothers later come to uh, uh, Egypt. He stands before Pharaoh at 30. He has a dream at 17. He's in his forties when his family began to come to Egypt and the famine comes seven years of good times and seven years of famine. You got to know in your good times, glory to God. You got to know when everything's working out and everything succeeded and you're having success. You got to know it's God. Are you following me? That's the dream that Joseph interpret from Pharaoh. You're going to have seven years of good time, but you're going to have seven years of bad time and famine and severe famine. And, and do we trust God in lack? Do we trust God in this pandemic? Do we trust God when there's financial challenge? Have God kept us? Glory to God. Those of you that are still here, you got to look back on how God has brought us and brought our parents, uh, our grandparents. Come on, people of color. Look what we had to go through. I don't care if it's Tulsa. I don't care what they've done. I don't care if you change voting rights. I don't care. No weapon formed against us can prosper. Come on. You got to believe favor is on me. God bless mankind. All of mankind. God bless Noah and his son. The blessings of the Lord maketh glory to God. I said the blessings of the Lord maketh one rich. God puts you and elevates you in position. If you keep reading, Joseph became the second in charge in Egypt. Understand this. Pharaoh was a God. Pharaoh was looked upon as one of the many gods that they had in Egypt. So Joseph, a type of Christ now is the son of God. So therefore you couldn't get anything from Pharaoh. You couldn't get any needs met unless you went through Joseph. 
The Bible says, and Jesus teaches us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So do you see now when we embrace, when we accept Jesus, when we acknowledge him, when we live by his word, when his word is on the inside of us, we got favor. Do you understand now? Greater, hallelujah, is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So the greater one, when I acknowledge Jesus, accept him in me. He's a rock of my salvation. And so no weapon, nothing that comes against me in this world. You have tribulation, but I've overcome it. So when I embrace Jesus, accept Jesus, acknowledge Jesus, and do it according to the word, I have favor. I have authority. Joseph had authority. And whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. Whatever he did, uh, the Lord made it prosper. That was verse 23. Whatever he did. Does that line up with? Third John verse two and verse three and verse four. I pray that you prosper and be in health. How do you do that? Even as your soul. How do you do it? Even as your soul. Now let's go over to uh, Joshua chapter one. I want to show you a principle here. Verse eight. And I know a lot of you heard these things and you quote these things, but you got to go back and read it. You got to go back and read it. He tells Joshua as they're crossing over into the promised land. Remember, Moses led them 40 years uh, and then looked over in the promised land. But how many know God will bring you and bring things into fruition? He'll bring things to maturity. We got to be willing to wait. We got to be willing to trust. We got to know what's in us. We got to understand. That's another lesson. And, and I believe I'm going to preach it again when we get into our new building. I'm going to show you divine delay. I'm going to show everything don't happen overnight and it may not come tomorrow morning, but I still have hope on the inside of me. So that's what he's saying to Joshua. Now that they crossed over and they're getting ready to cross over the Jordan and God's going to separate the waters like he did at the Red Sea. He's telling them to be strong in the Lord. What I did for Moses, I'm going to do for you. Praise the Lord. God has no respect to person. And so he tells him in verse six, uh, be strong and of good courage. For this people you shall divide and inherit the land which I swore to their fathers to give them, which I swore to their... Look, 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 God promised it, God said it, and it will come to pass. See, some people say, God said it, I believe it, and it's going to happen, and it's going to come to pass. No, God said it, and it's established. If you don't believe it, that's your fault. See, you can't receive until you believe, but God's promises won't fail. Are you, he said, only be strong and very courageous, verse 7. And he said, you may observe to do all according to all the law. I'm trying to show you now the principles. This is why it worked for Joseph. This is why it'll work for you in Joshua. You observe to do according to all the law, which Moses' servant commands you. Moses, my, my servant, do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. Praise the Lord. You're going to what? Prosper, be led in an easy way, have success. Now, understand this, what happened to Israel. Understand uh, uh, where they went off tra track. I'm preaching on Wednesday about Jeremiah. He told them they're going into Babylon and they went there 70 years. Their destruction, their downfall, our downfall is our lack of knowledge of the word of God, our lack of knowledge and our disobedience. We got to learn to be obedient to the word. We got to let the word become a lamp unto our path, a light. Uh, are you following me? Unto our path. So whatever direction, if I'm led in a successful way, he leads me beside still waters. He make me to lie down. Glory, uh, glory to God in green pastures. Uh, Psalms 37, don't fret. Don't worry about those who are prospering in their own way. The steps of a good man, David writes there in Psalms 37, are ordered by the Lord. Are you following me? And even though that man fall, even though that man is in conflict, even though that man is sold into slavery, even though that man is in prison, the steps of a good man order. And even though he fall, God is holding him up. Glory to God with his hand. Somebody ought to give him the praise. Now you understand, Jeremiah. That's why we give him the praise. He saved me. I'm saved. He healed me and I'm healed. He delivered me and I'm delivered no matter what. So you, he said here, whatever uh, you do will prosper wherever you go. If you meditate, if you have precepts, if you line it up, are you understanding? Verse eight, look, this book of the law, this book of the, it's talking about the word of God, God's precepts, God's concepts. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. 
Do you understand that? Psalms 1. Romans 2. Now you understand why I'm quoting it. Don't be conformed in harmony, function, agreement with the world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind, your soul, your understanding, your passion, your desire. That's what that word means. And, and be renewed by the word of God and then prove what is good. So law is saying it's God's law, God's precepts, God's guidance, you, you, God's standards. Are you following me? And so you got to meditate on this law and maybe I'll go over to Psalms 19. So you'll understand in Psalms 119, the law of the Lord in my heart, glory to God. Psalms 119 verse 11. I hid your word that I might not sin. See, I won't get off track or miss the mark. Glory to God. I got the word in me. So the word keeps me on the straight and narrow. This book of the law, precepts, concepts, my word shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. Now I'm reading a little fast and I like to explain because we got to say out of our mouth, glory to God, what God says. I said, we got to say out of our mouth. You understand it now? Jesus says in Mark 11, speak to the mountain and believe in your heart and not doubt. What are you speaking? You're speaking the word of God so that no matter what's in front of me, glory to God, this thing seems uh, bigger than me. This mountain seems bigger than me. But when I believe the word of God, I speak to the mountain, believe in my heart and not doubt that mountain will be cast into sea and I'm going to have glory to God, whatever I say. So Romans, what, 10, 8, the word is nigh thee, the word of faith, which we preach. It's in your heart and in your mouth. See, the problem is too many believers, too many Christians are saying what the world said. Look here, if I don't get the vaccine, I, I may get the virus. And you know, the vaccine is going to save me. You saying what the, the government is saying. You saying what the doctors are saying. But he said in Psalms 107, he sent his word and healed me. So the first precedence, the first standard, the first thing I stand on is the word of God. I am the healed of the Lord. Isaiah 53 verse five, by his stripes, glory to God, I'm healed. He was wounded for my transgression, bruised for my iniquity, chastisement of my peace, which is another word for prosperity was upon him. And by his stripes, I'm healed. First Peter 2 24, you'll see the same thing. So I'm standing on the word. Paul writes in Romans 10 and Isaiah also says this, whose report are you going to believe? That's what I want to know. What are you trusting? What are you, you see where success, the truth is in you. Whose report? I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. Now, doctors, vaccines, physical things, God gives us witty inventions. Those people are in place to try to aid or help. The doctor practiced medicine, but he's not perfect. He's practicing, but God doesn't have to practice. He is God all by himself. All praise belong to him. Glory to God. So you got to get in your mouth. You got to say what God said in order to have the victory. You see what I'm saying? Joseph held onto what? His dream. He spoke his dream. When Pharaoh called him and said, interpret my dream, he said, that's God's position. So whatever I speak, whatever I say to you is going to be from God. If I give you the interpretation of the, of the fat cows and the skinny cows, it came from God. If I, if I give you the interpretation of all the wheat and the grain, and then the, the, the uh, skinny wheat and grain, it came from God. See, Joseph kept in his mouth, the precepts of God. So in prison, in slavery, in, in the hole he was put in at first, God caused him to succeed. He will lead you in an easy way, but you got to get the right thing in your mouth. It's not what everybody else is saying. What did I just say? It's not what everybody else is saying, but it's what God is saying. So people get agitated with you. And first Peter four, because you're not living like them. You're not speaking like them. Verse six and seven and further down, uh, uh, one through on down because you don't live a, a lustful and, and destructive life. Well, this is okay. That's okay. See, you can't prosper in that thing. You can do it your way. The law makes laws. Things are lawful, but they're not beneficial because they fight and war against my soul. Now you understand Galatians. Five, though it says that our spirit is contrary to our flesh. 
So we got to say out of our mouth. That's what I'm trying to get you to understand. We got to say out of our mouth, the precepts, we got to line it up. The law, we got to get it straight. This is what God said. And he'll lead me in the right way. So he said, meditate and get this word in your mouth. Do not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate, rehearse it. That's what the word meditate, speak it, say it, meditate it day and night. What do we do with it? We meditate day and night. And too many of us, uh, we think meditation is just thinking. And so all we're doing is thinking about uh, what we're going through instead of saying. I I'm turning over here so I can give you that direct uh, definition in the Hebrew, uh, what it means by meditate. So you got to, you, you got to think about it. You got to have it. You got to say it. You got to rehearse it. Are you following me? You got to observe to do according all that is written therein. You got to observe to what? Do it. So meditation is not just, I'm turning here quickly. I'm going to read it directly. It's not just, uh, uh, uh thinking. Because we, we understand our success is even as our soul, even as our mind It's not just thinking, but, but what is it? To moan, to growl, to utter, to muse, to mutter it, to meditate, to devise, and to plot, to speak. Are you following me? To utter, to speak, to meditate, to devise, to muse, to imagine. Are you following me? So I got to speak it when I meditate, not just think it. So as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. But out of the heart, glory to God, comes the issues of life. So I got to get this thing in my, my soul. I got to get it in my spirit. When we talk about the heart, that's the spirit and the soul. Siamese twins. Come on. The word is quick and powerful. It divides between the spirit and soul, and it also is a discerner of the heart. So when we allow that word on the inside, it discerns the intents of our heart. So when my intent, when my purpose, when my desires, when my feelings line up with the word, glory to God, I began to speak it with power. And the word is quick. The word is living. That's what it said. The word is alive. The word is sharp. The word is powerful. So I put a word on it. Isaiah 55, 11, and his word will not come back void glory to God, but it prospers in every area where it is sent. So I put a word, the word goes before me. The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path in my heart. I've hid his word. His word is sweeter. Psalms 19 than a honey in a honeycomb. So we, we, we muse ourselves with it. We imagine that's where we get our vision, right? The vision is singular. Praise the Lord. So we meditate on that word day and night that we may observe to do according to all that is written. For then you will make your way prosperous and then glory to God, you will have good success. Come on, have I not commanded you? And this is where people and so many of us are failing because we don't know the word. We don't understand the word. We don't live by the word. There's so many of you want God to guide you. You want success. You want to achieve, but you've been taught this thing is old fashioned, old fogey. You, you know what that preacher saying doesn't make sense. And so, so many of you are misguided. Uh, Paul writes it this way in Corinthians. He says, the God of this world has blinded your minds so you cannot see and blinded your eyes so you can't see the glorious light of the gospel. So why is Satan blinding your eyes? Why does he not want you to comprehend the word? Why does he not want you to understand the word? Why is he doing so many things to block the word from being preached? Because he's blinding your eyes so you can't see the light. And if you can't see the light, you can't come out of darkness. You can't come out of the prison. You can't come out of bondage. You can't come out of the problem. You can't cause your way to prosper. You can't have good success when your eyes are blind. Praise the Lord. And, and, and so I, I'm here to open blind eyes. That's what Jesus said. The spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the gospel to those of you that are in darkness in Luke four, to preach the gospel, to open the eyes of the blind. The Bible tells us in third John, it tells us in first John three, that Jesus was manifested glory to God to destroy the works of the devil. And so the devil has blinded your eyes 
so you can't see the glorious light of the gospel. People, you have to understand, that's why so much pressure I put on those who are perfecting your souls. I watch for your souls. Are you following me? And you're going to prosper and be in health even as your soul. That's why attacks come upon your teachers, your ministers, your apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors. Look in the Old Testament. How many prophets? Jeremiah, put in jail, put in prison. Look at Elijah running from Jezebel, hiding in a cave. What is all that? This is pressure on the word so you can't prosper and be successful. We got to understand our success is in you, Lord. My life is in you, Lord. The Lord was with Joseph and caused him to prosper. Have favor in Potiphar's house, have favor in the jail, and he will cause us to have favor. If we line up line by line, precept by precept, that's what is law. It's got to be God's law. Now you understand in the natural, some things are lawful, but not beneficial because we allow the wrong thing in our soul. He says to John, the truth is on the inside of you. I'm hoping you understanding, and I'm taking my turn time to show you what true success is, is in your soul. Glory to God. Psalms 23 makes sense to you now. It's in your soul and goodness and mercy is following me all the days of my life. He's leading me and he's following me, and he gives angels glory to God, charge over me. So third John said, you prosper in all things and be in health, even as your soul. Prayerfully, this lesson that made sense to you, prayerfully you understand, and prayerfully you'll go back and read and study to show yourself approved unto God. And then when you're going through, you will not be embarrassed and you will not be ashamed. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll be back with you shortly to pray with you concerning tithe and offering. Thank you so much for listening to this broadcast today. Thank you for studying with me and hearing from heaven. I pray that the message has blessed you. We talked about succeeding the right way. You, you have to make Jesus Lord of your life in order for him to guide you. Think about it. The Lord's my shepherd and I shall not want. I want to thank all of you that are sowing into our ministry, giving your tithe and offering. Those of you who are part of the ministry, those of you that are friends of our ministry and maybe belong to another ministry or church and you're giving offerings, we thank you for it. Jesus is Lord. Make him Lord of your life. He's given us power to get well, to establish his covenant. That's what he's done. Come on, make Jesus Lord of everything. He's either Lord of all, or he's not Lord at all. I'm getting ready to pray with you concerning tithes and offerings. Thank you so much for giving. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you thanks and we give you praise. We honor you. We thank you for the privilege of giving in our tithe and offering. You love a cheerful giver and you are able to make all grace abound towards us that we have all sufficiency of all things. You give us seed to sow and then you multiply the seed sown. You give us bread for our food and we give you the praise and we give you the glory. We thank you in advance. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy own have we given thee. And so we give you the praise, we give you the glory. Thank you for those who are giving in the ministry. I call them blessed, their needs are met according to your riches and glory. Father, we honor you. Wealth and riches shall be in our house. And we thank you that you increase us more and more. We give you praise in advance. Thank you that you receive and bless what we give in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. And again, we appreciate you and value you. We look forward to being back with you. Remember on the 27th of June, we'll be back into a physical service. However, on these Sundays, I will be continuing to teach 
and give you the Word of God. So uh, here this Sunday, next Sunday, then June 27th, we're back. We'll give you our schedule for July. So just be patient. Know that God has given you a word, and we praise God for you. I'll be back with you live Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. God bless you. I love you. Look forward to being back with you. I want to share with you how to become a born-again believer into the Christian family. The word Christian is only in the Bible three times. Jesus' original intent was for us to become believers, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. Number one, recognize that you are a sinner and hopelessly lost without Christ. Romans 8, chapter 3, verse 12 and verse 23. It says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us need him. Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. John 3 tells us in verse 5 through 7 and verse 16, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The second thing you need to do to become a believing, born-again Christian Believe the good news that God sent Jesus Christ to take your place, died in your stead, and paid the full penalty for sin. He was raised from the dead. So we need to believe that God has raised Jesus from the dead, that Jesus has come in our place in Romans 5 and 8, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 15, 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, 2 Corinthians 5, 14 and 17. Make sure that you read these scriptures. The third thing you need to do to become a believing Christian, born again Christian, began to confess this with your mouth and believe in your heart that God through Christ can save you. Romans 10, it tells us that if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, then we shall be saved. Whoever called upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You also see that reference in John 3, and we gave you that verse earlier. Hebrews 7.25, we know that the Lord saved us to the utmost, and today is the time for us to call upon His name. The fourth thing you need to do to become a born-again believing Christian is rely on God's Word and not your own feelings or theories. Not feeling that we save is nothing that we have done, is all that He has done. Romans 1.16 says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. 2 Corinthians 1 and 20, all the promises of God is yes and amen. Rely upon God's promises. The fifth thing, realize that you are saved by grace through faith in Christ, not anything you have done. You'll find that quoted in Ephesians and written in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. For we are saved by grace through faith, not of ourselves, lest any man should boast. Also in 1 John 1 and 9 tells us, for those of you that's even coming back to the Lord, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you from your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And so if you've done those things, and you decided today that you want to accept Jesus as your personal Savior, and even those that need to recommit your life back to Him and you strayed away, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Your word declares that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I confess my belief in Jesus, and I know that you gave and given unto me salvation. You said in your word, if I shall confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead, I will be saved. I believe in my heart that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe He lived, died, and was raised from the dead for my justification and my salvation. I'm calling upon the name of Jesus 
So I know, Father, that you saved me now. Your word says, with the heart, man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. I do believe with my heart, and I confess Jesus now as my Savior. Therefore, I am saved. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. If you have done those things today, accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Do not rely on your feelings, rely on the Word of God. For those of you that are in a backslidden predicament, and today you're saying, I give my life back to you, Lord. The Bible says in 1 John, it says, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Jeremiah 3 says that God is married to the backslider, so he never divorced you. So don't divorce him. And so he will always receive you back. Hebrews tells us your sins and iniquities he will not remember anymore. So say this with me. Father, I thank you for the blood of Jesus. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your forgiveness. I believe now that I am forgiven. I come back to you humbly. I repent of my sins. I am sorry. And God, I thank you that you receive me in love. You receive me by grace, and I receive restoration in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to our broadcast. We air our broadcast Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. and Sundays at 11 o'clock a.m. on Facebook, YouTube, and Covenant Online. Join us every Saturday morning at 11.30 Eastern on the NOW Network. Our next in-person service will be Sunday, June 27th at 10.30 a.m. Future services will be announced as they are scheduled. Registration is required to attend. Whether you're at home or on your mobile device, you never have to be away from Covenant. Download our app and stay updated with events, messages, and pertinent information concerning the ministry through the CCM app. Watch your favorite sermon series and add the Covenant Christian Ministries channel app to your television through Roku or Amazon Prime Video. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at CCM Marietta. Also, visit our website, covenantchristianministries.org. Join us online every week for a word from God through Pastor Anderson. Be sure to comment and let us know that you're watching. There are four easy ways to give to Covenant Christian Ministries. You can give online at covenantchristianministries.org. You can also give using the CCM mobile app. If you have a PayPal account, you can give directly from the PayPal app using the friend and family option. You can also go to paypal.me forward slash covenant Christian men. Lastly, you can always give by mail at P.O. Box 4065, Marietta, Georgia 30061. Your support makes ministry happen. Thank you again for joining us. Have a great week.